and welcome to the first ever Weather Underground debate. Ahead of the second and final presidential debate of 2020, we here at Woo TV wanted to host our very own weather debate in which we get to the tough questions. I'm Alex Wilson. I'll be the moderator tonight. I'm not putting up with any malarkey. Now let's meet the candidates. Up first, we've got our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nabb. Very distinguished. Dr. Rick Nabb used to work for the federal government. He promises to issue hurricane watches to every American who needs a new watch. He's also been married for 30 years, has one teenage son who's already smarter than him. We may be uh, interviewing him in the next debate. Now let's meet our second candidate, meteorologist and my co-host, Mike Bettis. Mike graduated with honors from high school. He also bowled a 186 in a mini pro-am tournament at the age of 11. He has never won an argument against me. As the kids would say, facts. You understand why I'm moderating now. I've compiled a list of questions to pose to our candidates, and each will get one minute to answer. So we flipped a coin before the debate. Dr. Nab, you get to answer first. The first question. On average, more than 100 people in America lose their lives in flooding-related incidents. If elected, what will you do to mitigate these deaths? Well, thank you, Alex. Thank you, everyone. You know, the Turnaround Don't Drown campaign has saved the countless lives of Americans. But for the most flood-prone roads in this country, we need to go further. We need to install flood barrier gates. Now, I've reached across the aisle to Mr. Bettis, and we have a bipartisan proposal to fund and install numerous NAB Bettis gates around the country. Now, he and I do disagree on which name should go first on the name of this gate. I mean, I know Mike is a little bit out of shape over the whole Abrams and Bettis thing back in the day, but I really do think that naming with my name first would, would nab attention and really is in the Bettis interest of all Americans. See what I did there? That was a great dad joke. Yeah. And dad jokes are fantastic. Do you know why? Because they put mm -hmm. family first. And that, my Americans, is far more important than actually being funny. Saving mm -hmm. lives from flooding is mm -hmm. serious business. All right, all right Dr. Nabby, uh, your time is up. That, that, that's an interesting proposal, dad yeah. jokes. And, uh, you know, Mike, I asked the same question to you. Can dad jokes solve this problem? I don't think they can. That's not what America wants. And I will tell you this, under my, uh, my opponent's plan, your flood insurance premiums are going to go up. Everyone's flood insurance premiums are going to go up. And we all know that when you name a floodgate warning system, it goes alphabetically. It's Bettis NAB. We fundamentally disagree on that. Uh, and even though I think the proposal is a fine one, it has to be Bettis NAB. But I'd take it even a step farther. I'd go with a public-private partnership here. We are getting a lot of technology in our vehicles these days, right? And we are even getting technology that alerts you if there's a child in the back seat on a hot day. Well, how about this? How will we install technology in our vehicles that alerts you when there's high water about to inundate your car? Vibrate your seat, vibrates the wheel, an alarm goes off, screams in your ear, turn around, don't drown. That's what America needs in your face reform. Uh, great timing. Okay, well, you know, we're going to let America ponder that. Some interesting uh, responses on both answers. Uh, we've got another question. I want to switch gears. I want to switch topics. Uh, talk more about hurricane names. We recently polled our Woo TV audience and they agreed that the Atlantic hurricane season needs an overall refresh, uh, an overwhelming 76 percent. Uh, Mike, you get to answer first on this one. How would you refresh the names? Do you think we need a refresh? Well, I think I would repeal and replace all the names. I think we have no other choice. I think we need to add Q, U, X, Y, and Z back to the list. And I think we need to have uh, an elimination of the Greek names. We don't need that anymore. We need another sub list of 14 more names to give us 40 names total. I think we need to open it up to the public for naming. And I think when we do that, if your name is chosen, we need to have a hurricane day. I propose December 1st as a national hurricane day. And so on that day, the Hurricane Center releases the new list of names every single year, and it's, it's put up to the public. And if your name is chosen by a select committee, you get a $500 discount on your insurance premiums. I'm there for the people. It's a win-win, and we need marketing. We need to right, market Ma this. Make it a big deal. Mike? Air Hurricane Day Mike? on the weather.
All right, we've, we've muted his mic. Unfortunately, he has gone uh, beyond time. Dr. Nab, uh, some very big uh, promises there. What do you think in regards to hurricane names? I agree with most of what Mr. Bettis had to say. The main issue is that we have to better relate to everyday Americans when it comes to weather. So I agree with everything he said about the hurricane names. But relating to Americans better is why I am announcing tonight the new IPN scale, the icky poo nasty scale for truly yucky weather. You can all relate to it, right? When the weather is really yucky, you want to know. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give each town mm -hmm. between one yeah. and five poop emojis when it's really nasty so you can be prepared for the nasty days as well as for the good days. Yeah. You know, I'm going to point out everything that stinks in D.C. Things are looking up, America, because the poop is going yeah. down. A lot to ponder. See, America, this is what's wrong with right this back. campaign. This, this. Well, welcome back to the first ever Weather Underground debate. Our candidates have addressed preventing flood deaths and proposed changes to the list of Atlantic hurricane names. Our third and last question takes a cue from the hit movie from the year 2000, Miss Congeniality. Describe your perfect date. That's a tough one. <laughs> Um, I'd have to say April 25th, because it's not too hot, not too cold. All you need is a light jacket. <laughs> That's a great answer. It's going to be a tough one to beat. Dr. Nab, you are up. Please describe your perfect date. Well, my perfect date is July 28th, 1990, the day I married the love of my life been married for 30 years but the perfect date that we go out on i would take her down to the coast for the day we would go to the best mexican restaurant in town and have a spicy good time with chips and salsa and chili con queso and fajitas and black beans and rice and sopapillas <laughs> and everything we could possibly enjoy and then we'd make a bathroom stop possibly mm. two depending on how the beans mm. went <laughs> then we would go out to the beach enjoy the sunset and have warm cookies and ice cold chocolate milk and make another bathroom stop. Then we would go to a concert and see whatever her favorite musical artist might be. While we're enjoying some popcorn and drinks after the concert, we'd make another bathroom stop. And then we get in the car and we would sing our favorite songs together yeah. all the way home. And when we get there, I would give her a foot massage while we watch binge watch her favorite shows. That's a very complete. It sounds like a real uh, gas. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Bettis, I ask you the same question. Describe your perfect date or say, date. You, you interpret that question say, as you will. I would say, ladies of America, I'm there for you. Think about this. Imagine, if you will, a fresh fallen snow. You're with your, you're with your significant other on a sleigh ride, snuggled close underneath a fleece blanket. Your sleigh ride drops you off at a heated yurt at the base of the mountains with a beautiful view of the white caps. You start off with an ice wine toast, and then you have lobster mac and cheese, steaming lobster mac and cheese. I know you love it, Alex. <laughs> then it's hot chocolate molten lava cake with a 20-year-old tawny port. As your sleigh ride then picks you up again and takes you to a remote ice pond where you ice skate hand in hand under the starry night as John Legend serenades you with a Mormon tabernacle choir. That's all I've got. Wow. Uh, again, very complete uh, responses from both of our candidates. I'm impressed, and I'm hungry for lobster. Uh, that concludes the question and answer portion of our debate. Now for the closing statements. Each candidate gets one minute. Mike, you are up first. Why are you our weatherman? I think there can really only be one people's weatherman, and I believe that is me. I am there for you in all seasons. I will be there for you when you need your leaves raked in the fall, when you need a shovel in the winter, when you need your tulips bulbs planted in the, in the spring, when you need some sunscreen on your lower back, I'll be there to apply that for you in the summertime. My opponent, his radical elitist academic agenda, we can't stand for this. He would rather Lecture you on your soffits, then strap on a tool belt and help you put on hurricane shutters. I believe a vote for him would unleash a tsunami of storm surge from coast to coast. It would inundate our suburbs with water. We can't have that. I will be there for you. A vote for me is a vote for winter, spring, summer, and fall. We're at an inflection point.
your time. We're battling for the soul of weather. You're, Mr. Bettis, uh, the choice is clear. Up. Thank you. Uh, Thank we're you. We're going to mute him. Yeah, we got to mute him. Uh, Dr. Nab, I'm going to let you uh, make your final statement in response. Well, if there's any need for evidence of how much I want to keep the people of this country safe and how much I love this country, look no further than the fact that tonight I am wearing red, white, and blue. Now, I'm asking the American people to trust me. Trust me that I actually am wearing red somewhere else tonight on my body. It's just that I can't really show it to you right now. But you need to trust me that it's there. Mm -hmm. And this is a professional, family-oriented show, so I don't want things to get too silly. But I, I know some of you don't believe me. You don't trust anybody on a debate stage. So just for you, I'll show you. I'm wearing red socks. So red, white, and blue, I'm there all for right. you. Uh, Dr. Nav, your time is up. Uh, great display of uh, patriotism and flexibility. Uh, I appreciate our candidates uh, for their time. This concludes our debate. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we know, if anything, these, go, these really go viral on Twitter, so we're interested to hear your thoughts. I'll be back after this break with a quick look at your wake-up forecast.